Welcome to our review on choosing a reaction pathway. So when we're considering chemical manufacturing, the key goal of any industrial manufacturer is to turn a profit at the end of the day. So when they're actually trying to decide how to make these chemicals, then they need to consider a few factors when they select the actual reaction pathway to use. So the first one is the yield of the product. So they want a nice high yield in order to get the maximum amount of their product from their raw materials. They would like a high atom economy. So that means that there's less wastage. They want a fast rate of reaction so they can produce a greater amount of product in a shorter space of time. They need to consider the byproducts being made. So firstly, are they toxic? Will there be special treatments to get rid of them, etc.? Because that adds costs to it. Or are there no byproducts, in which case it's a very good reaction? And if we're talking about a reversible reaction, we also need to consider the equilibrium position, which we'll look more at in the later part of C5. So a typical question they could give you here is they will give you two different processes to manufacture the same product. And obviously there will be a few bits of information in a table usually that they give you and you then need to identify which is the best reaction pathway to use. So I've given you an example here, a very simplified version. Process one is a two-step method, which has a yield of 80% and an atom economy of 25.4%. And process two is a single step method, which gives us a yield of 80% and an atom economy of 100%. So in this case, we'd select process two because it's got a higher atom economy. And the key thing to remember here is if they've asked you to compare two things in any science question at all on your papers, then make sure that you are using comparative terms. So rather than just saying we use process two because it has a 100 percent atom economy, you've got to link it back to how that relates to process one. So adding that ER onto higher means all the difference. If you just said it has a high atom economy, nothing. If you said it's got a higher atom economy, you get your mark. So don't forget to use those comparators to actually identify why one process is better than the other. The other aspect that we mentioned earlier was this idea of byproducts. So when we refer to a byproduct, we're talking about a chemical that's formed in a reaction in addition to the product we actually wanted to make our desired product. So what we find is depending on the byproduct, sometimes they're actually very useful and then we can also sell them to a different process. So sometimes byproducts can be useful. However, other byproducts that we may make could be toxic and that's problematic because toxic chemicals have a lot of rules and regulations on what we've got to do to deal with them. Or they could just be of very little use. So you could generate vast quantities of something that no one wants to buy, which obviously isn't great for your business. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can recall the factors that need to be considered when selecting a reaction pathway and also explain why a particular reaction pathway is chosen to produce a product when you're provided with appropriate data in the form of a table or some other form of information.